title of this story is Paulo's Parachute Mission, and this story takes place in Brazil. Does somebody know where Brazil is? Nick? In South America. South America? Okay, good. It is below the United States, right? And so if I have the globe, here's North America and South America, right? What's this imaginary line there in the middle? Devin? The equator. The equator, okay. So Brazil is right here, okay? So this story takes place here in Brazil. Chapter one, no place like home. <coughs> Paulo peered into the last cardboard box in his bedroom. Hiding in the shadowed corner was his soccer ball. He bent down to take it out, but stopped, his hand hovering a few inches above it. Once that ball was out of the box, he would be completely unpacked. Friends, the move would Paolo be hadn't fine. felt excited that afternoon. Now he was sitting in their new kitchen, he still didn't feel excited. He didn't want to be in this new house, and he didn't want to make any new friends. Paolo's heart fell as he remembered the old apartment and his friend. He held the paracatus up and then let it go, watching it drift slowly to the ground. Why do you think it drifts slowly? Why when he tosses that up, why does it go slowly to the ground? Adam, what do you think? Because it's a parachute. So what, what does a parachute do? How does it work? The wind, it pushes up and then it kind of drifts. Okay, so, so it catches some wind and it kind of drifts. Good. Um, Angie, what do you think? The top part of it fills with air and that's why it feels so slow going down. Because it's filling. Okay. Very good. And Ariana, what did you just say? That Say that again. It's like a flat piece of paper when you drop it to the ground. When did we ever do a flat piece of paper and it drifted down? Does anybody remember what that was? We were um, trying to find some, like, some things about air, and then we dropped a crumpled piece of paper and a flat piece of paper, and we saw which one hit the ground first. Exactly. And it was like exactly. What do, what do we call that? The what of air? Does anybody remember that? Air has certain things. Did we remember? Nicole, do you remember? Properties. Properties. The properties of air, remember? And so why, Logan, why did, um, why did the paper come down so slowly when the crumpled piece fell down so quickly? Because the crumpled piece might have been a little heavier and, well, it was not that big, so it didn't catch that much air, but the flat piece of paper caught a lot of air and the air pushed up and it just floated down. Okay, interesting. Um, Logan said maybe that crumpled piece was a little heavier. Um, Vivian, what do you think about that? Um, they're both the same sheet of paper, so they couldn't be, one could be heavier. So what was the real reason that one fell more quickly than the other one? Um, Adam? Because it wasn't catching as much air. Exactly, it wasn't catching as much air. Why did your family move? Lucas asked as they kicked the ball back and forth. For my parents' jobs. They're aerospace engineers, Paolo explained. Right now, they're working on a paracatus that will be part of a spacecraft, Paolo continued. In Brasilia, my parents teach a whole course at the university about drag, air resistance, and how things fall through the air or the atmospheres on other planets. A Kapuaku mission. Anybody know what Kapuaku is? Okay, go ahead and look in the glossary. What is it, Ariana? A coconut-sized fruit. Kapuaku is used to make sweet juices, ice creams, and other desserts. So did you hear it? It's a fruit, a coconut-sized fruit, yeah. used to make, to make ice cream and other sweet desserts. I wonder what it tastes like. Kapuaku. Kapuaku. We should get some. I'm going to ask my dad if he knows it. Okay. Oh, he would know, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Make sure you ask him. And if he can tell me where to get it, I'll get some and we'll taste it. So tomorrow we'll continue this, okay? Um, crash landing, what do you think that's gonna be about? Anybody have a prediction what's gonna happen when they go try to get this, what is it, coconut size fruit? Anybody have an idea? Angie? Um, when they're trying to get the fruit, um, a tree could fall or something. Wow, Julia? Um, maybe when they're trying to get the fruit from the tree, um, one of the guys are going to fall down. 
Wow. All right, well, we'll find out tomorrow what really happens to uh, Paolo and Lucas and the Capuacu. So let's pick it up at um, chapter five. So we're halfway through. Okay, chapter five, crash landing. Paolo scanned the branches around him and sighed as he began scooting down the tree. I don't see any others that I can reach. We'll have to find another tree. You know what we need, Lucas asked? Your paracatus. That thing? Paolo scoffed as he reached the ground. How would you explain to somebody how a parachute works? So you're looking at that parachute and it has the canopy and the suspension lines and the load. How does it work? Like if somebody, a second grader came in and said, you said, oh, let me tell you how that works. How does it really work? Uh, Vivian? The air pushes up on it while the, um, the canopy is pushing down and it makes it go slow. Okay, does somebody want to add to that a little bit? Um, Abby? When the air is pushing up on it, it, when the canopy opens up, it makes more room for the air so it can get used. So Abby said when the canopy opens up, it makes more room for the air, right? Good job, so let's see if this works. Great, said May. It sounds like you're almost ready to start the next step. Imagine. You imagine lots of different solutions, then you choose one and make a detailed plan. Then you create your paracatus, test it, and improve it. The next day, Paolo found himself again in the Kapawaku tree, putting a fruit into the bucket tied to their improved paracatus. Lucas stood on the ground, looking up into the green leaves of the tree. Okay, Paolo said. Are you ready? Ready, Lucas said. Let's go. Paolo released the paracatus. He held his breath as he watched the Kapawaku float down like a leaf in the wind. Finally, with a soft glide, the fruit landed gently on the ground. We did it, Lucas called. Paolo climbed down and then jumped the last few feet from the tree and ran over to inspect the fruit for himself. <coughs> Good job, Paolo said. Lucas and Paolo slapped hands to congratulate each other. You are now officially, what kind of engineers? Aerospace. Aerospace. Well, what do you think we should do before um, we make our own? What's, what do you think we should think about first? Uh, Nicole? Wait. Probably the shape or the size of the parachute. Okay, the shape and the size of the parachute. Um, Devin? What materials we're going to use? Yeah, I think materials are always like a really big part of engineering, right? You don't want to just use one when you know there's something else that could be better. So you want to test those, right? Savannah? Imagine of your design. Absolutely. After we test some materials, we're probably going to imagine. And then? Um, we need to know what we're, put, what we're going to drop down. Yeah. yeah, what are we going to do with this, right? Ask all those questions, right? Nora? Um, we need, well, this is kind of like a follow up to Abby. We need to know what's going to be the load because it depends on the weight, on how, what materials. Exactly. So we have a lot of things to consider. Uh, Kiana, do you want to add? We need to um, plan it out to make sure, um, like, how it's all going to go. Exactly. Exactly, and what, what's the purpose of your mission, right? What, what does your paracatus have to do? For them, they had to get a big fruit, right? What about for the mom, the mom and dad? What was what were their purpose in designing something? Kendra? Um, they were trying to um, like make a parachute this way with you know, the rocket, but when it would <coughs> land, it would be easier. It would like land easier. And what did they have to consider? Were they doing it for Earth? What, were they, what did they have to think about? Um, Abby? Like the how the atmosphere is on other planets. Right, what the atmosphere is like somewhere else. So tomorrow we're actually going to do a little activity about thinking about atmospheres, um, what else you have to consider when you're not working with just the atmosphere of the Earth. We're going to think about other things in space. Um, but today, what I would like you to do as we just finish this, I would like you to take about five or ten, probably ten minutes at your group if you go to the next clean page in your science notebook, you're going to see um, the engineering design process, all the steps that Paolo and Lucas had to go through, and just kind of fill it in, get some evidence from the text. Where, um, where in the story did they do the ask part? Where in the story did they do what's the next step? Imagine, and then where did they plan, create, and improve it? Then we'll come back here and see if all groups found that same information, and then we'll come back to what we think an aerospace engineer is, okay? I think the ask part is when he like asks, like, yeah, he asks like the questions and how, like, 
kind of materials. It's when, he asked, it. it's when he asked, um, how could we get the feet down? It's on page 28. What did you get for asking the manager? I have they drew out a plan and decided to attach the bucket to the parachute and put the fruit in the bucket to, and then drop it down to see. So then for a tree, I can put the rocks and everything. Let's see. All right, little engineers, can I have your attention? Could I have everybody this way? So did your groups, did you come up with the similar evidence from the text supporting the steps of the engineering design process? Okay, so where did uh, we had some conversation over here, Adam and, and Devin and uh, Victoria and I, about what was happening in the story where he was asking questions. Savannah? They were asking May about, like, about how the drag will work on the on the spacecraft and how how much of drag they use exactly. when uh, when they launch a rocket ship. Right, and um, Nicole, I think Nicole's right as well, and on page 24, I think it was, right, Nicole, what did you find there that they were asking questions about? That they were asking, like, how heavy the Kakawaku would affect the parachute, and they were asking about drag. Okay, so they're, uh, throughout um, many other parts in the book, they're asking questions as well. Very good. Okay, so where in the story are the, uh, do the boys start to imagine? Do they start to imagine? Adam? I've been on page 33 when Paolo and Lucas brainstormed many parakeet designs. Very good. Everybody agree with that? Yeah. Okay. And about what about their plan, Thomas? They attached the bucket to the they well they thought to attach the bucket to the parachute and put the cable walk in the bucket. Okay. Anybody have something to add to that, um, Ariana? They made a detailed plan of what shape and what barricades would carry in the Very good. Yep. And what about the create? Abby? Um, they, they were saying to attach the bucket to the, um, the strings and then put rocks in it so they have the very Why was it a good idea to test a model before they actually tested with their real, real paracadus. Why was it important <coughs> to try something first before you go right to the, the real thing? Alexis? So you don't have to start it all over again, and you know that it already works, so. Okay, so you can see if it already works, okay. Um, somebody want to add, Angie? Well, in case it doesn't work. Exactly, you don't want to be testing on the real thing yet because you're gonna, how many, you might break how many kapawaku? Fruits, a lot of them, right? And um, where did they improve? Nick? Lucas said maybe this will make a better canopy holding a different material. Very good. Okay, so now, little engineers, tomorrow we will do a little activity with um, understanding different kinds of spacecraft and actually imagining and designing um, an, as some kind of spacecraft that needs to be outside of our atmosphere. My name is Jean Fasciano. I teach fourth grade here at the Sylvia School in Fall River. It's a gifted class, so um, these students are academically, you know, sound a little bit higher than their peers. Lesson one is a story, more of an interactive read aloud. I like to put notes in my book, um, especially when I'm doing an interactive read aloud. With these stories, and they're really good stories, kids are interested in them. But the thing is, in the manual, there's a plethora of questions that you can ask, and that that ideas for questions that you can ask to understand if students are comprehending the story. Um, you may not want to ask all those questions, so if there's one I know that's really important at a certain point, I'll, st I'll write it in the, you know, in the margin of the book just to make sure I don't forget to ask this question because this is important for them to know when they start thinking about their design. <laughs>